it says the Lord of hosts, I will even send the curse upon you. It's a preventable curse, a preventable calamity that shouldn't have been. But he said, if you will not lay to her, that's what I'm going to do. I will curse your blessings. Then he said, yea, I have cursed them already because you do not lay it to heart. Is the transgression of indifference that the Lord is saying that should not be. And then we're looking at Judges chapter 5. Judges chapter 5. In Judges chapter 5, we're looking at verse 23. What the Lord expects of his own people lay it to heart. Think about it. Get involved. Arise and do something. And do what the Lord requires. Don't be indifferent. We're looking at Judges chapter 5, verse 23. It says, Curse ye mirrors. Says, says the angel of the Lord, Curse ye bitterly the inhabitants thereof. Why? What evil have they committed? Adultery, fornication, immorality, stealing, sacrilege. What is it they have done? Because they came not to the help of the Lord. To the help of the Lord against the mighty. It says just because they were carefree, careless, non-challenged, not caring, not bothered, not concerned. And because they came not to the help of the Lord. And he said, well, that's all right. Gideon is there. Gideon is doing it. And he said, they are there. Deborah is doing it. And they said, Barak is there. And all those people are there. What do I need to worry? The 300 people following after Gideon, they are all there. And those apostles are there. Those disciples are there. All the soul winners are there. What have I got to do? Am I right? Since everybody is there already, what can I add to what they are doing? That indifference brings calamity and brings tragedy. I pray God will save us from all that tragedy in Jesus' name. I was waiting for your amen there. Yeah. I just want to, you to keep awake. You know, sometimes like this, when I open Old Testament, New Testament, the prophets and the kings and gospels and acts and Romans, Revelation, everywhere, then you say, okay, go on, pastor, and let me sleep. When you're ready to pray, call me, I'll join you. Everybody wake up. See, we're waking up. Thank God you are waking up. You are not indifferent in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 14. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, The saints says the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works are thou at neither cold nor hot. I would thou art cold or hot. Indifferent. Neither cold nor hot. Indifferent, neither up nor down. Indifferent, neither for or against. Indifferent, neither fervent nor just not doing anything. Or just like that, neither cold nor hot. It says so then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spill thee out of my mouth. Where do you stand? On which side are you? All these that we are talking about, the salvation of sinners and the evangelization of our community. Where do you stand? I stand nowhere. It's all right. Let them go and do it. I'm not opposed to it. Only I, I, I just, I, I don't know why. I just don't have any interest to do anything different. I just want to be at peace and at ease. I just want to live my life a quiet life. Get something done. No, it's too late for me now. I don't know the way my heart is. It's like I'm not interested in anything anymore. And the Lord is saying, because you are neither cold nor hot, I will spill thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich. What else am I looking for? I'm increased with goods. What else am I searching for? And I've need of nothing. What do I need again? 
I've done enough, I've got enough, I possess enough. Because of that, you are indifferent to the call of the Lord. And then it says, And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that sh the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. The people that are indifferent, they are naked spiritually. And because they said, okay, it's not my concern. I'm not asking for anything. I'm all right the way I am. I don't have to do anything anymore. That coldness, that lukewarmness, it says that makes you naked. And then it says, anoint thine eyes with eyes serve, that thou may see. As many as I love, I rebuke. As many as I, what? I hate. Tell me out loud. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasing. Be zealous, therefore, and do what? And repent. Don't be indifferent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. The Lord wants us to, to be active. To get up and get something done and not to be indifferent prevailing over the transgression of indifference point number three now we need to deal with the tongue of iniquity the tongue of iniquity isn't that the tongue that brought tragedy preventable tragedy upon many many people we're looking at james chapter three preventable tragedy the tragedy of an untamed tongue uncontrolled tongue unguarded tongue unguided tongue James chapter 3 verse 6 and the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity so is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the curse of nature and it is set on the fire of hell. How many people claim to be saved and their tongues bring them to the tragedy of hellfire? How many people claim to be trusted, trustworthy members of the church? And their tongues get them into destruction, devastation. The tongue is a world of iniquity. Brings destruction upon people. We're looking at 2 Kings chapter 7. 2 Kings chapter 7. Reading from verse 1. Then Elisha said, hear the word of the Lord. That shall silence everybody. Or of somebody there whose tongue will not be at rest. When you hear, hear the word of the Lord. That should make everybody pay attention and not think about your own thoughts, your own feeling, your own imagination, your own mind. Hear the word of the Lord. That says the Lord tomorrow about this time. Shall a measure of flour of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria? Then a lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would open the windows of heaven, might this thing be? You don't have to say that. If you didn't believe, you could have kept quiet. You can let, just, you can just say to yourself, "Let's wait and see." Look at what the prophet is saying, and look at what the prophet is declaring in his prophecy prediction. By this time tomorrow, the famine will come to an end. Everything will change. And God will bring plenty and prosperity for his people once again. And then he said, even if the Lord will open the windows of heaven, how can that be? You shouldn't have said that. 
the tongue of iniquity iniquity in their tongue sin in their tongue unbelief in their tongue and when it comes like that when you speak it out like that you make other people to be unbelieving he was a lord on whom the king was leaning and when a person like that says anything doubtful anything unbelieving anything derogatory to the word of god other people too will be unbelieving and the man of god said and he said behold thou shalt see it with thine eyes but shall not eat thereof let's look at verse 16. in verse 16 and the people went out and spoiled the tents of the syrians so a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel according to the word of the lord and the king appointed the lord on whose hand he leaped to have the charge of the gate and the people trudged upon him in the gate and he died as the man of god had said who speak when the king came down to him see the tragedy that came on him because of his tongue that shouldn't have happened why would you allow such things to happen in your life we're looking at numbers chapter 14 numbers chapter 14 preventable tragedy is good to be quiet good to be silent even when you don't understand what's going on why this why that why are you not quiet why don't you don't you just keep quiet and say let's see what will happen if it concerns you you go to the lord in prayer you repent turn to the lord and after that repentance after you've done the will of god you remain patient rather than spoiling everything spoiling your case spoiling your life with the utterances of your tongue. We're looking at Numbers chapter 14, verse 28. 14, verse 28. Here the Lord is telling us about those ten spies that went to the land and they came back. And then also these uh, children of Israel that murmured, that cried, that felt, Why has God brought uh, us out? of the land of Egypt to die in this wilderness see what happened verse 28 numbers 14 say unto them as truly as I live says the Lord as ye have spoken in my ears so will I do unto you your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness and all that were numbered of you according to your whole number from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me, doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. But your little ones, which ye said, should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. But as for you and your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness. Your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years and bear your wardens, and until your carcasses be wasted in the in the wilderness after the number of the days in which he searched the land even forty days each day for a year shall ye bear your iniquities even forty years and ye shall know the breach of my promise see what the lord did to them because of their tongue because of what he said the tongue of iniquity and do you remember the word of god i am god i change not i'm sure you are not thinking that god is wiser today than he was before he's always wise and what he did before you all he still does you might not see it because it's not happening to this nation at the same time but it's still happening many people are losing their spiritual heritage and spiritual